you're scrolling through your social feed and you see all these updates about people you're close to, people starting companies, engagements, maybe even the odd baby here and there, getting promoted at work. But you're wondering why you're seeing it in your social media feed instead of hearing it from them directly. And then it hits you like a bolt of lightning. Oh, wow. I guess we're just not that close anymore. Look, we're good friends with people and then life happens. We're living on the other side of the world. We have careers to build, empires to run, households to manage. It's part of the natural cycle of life. But even though that might be a case, today I want to share with you some tips for how to maintain friendships especially when life happens. Research shows that friendships are a key source of happiness and longevity, so it's definitely worth investing some time into. So if you're ready to learn more, then stick around. What's up, Explorers? Mary Daphne here of myexplorning.com, where we believe social skills are the key to the good life. What's the good life? It's where you call the shots, you have a crew you can count on, and you're on a mission that you care about. I think it's safe to say that we've all felt a little FOMO, fear of missing out, here and there. Not so much on the activity, but the fact that you didn't actually hear the news directly from your friend. You just saw the life update in their feed. Now, I get that this might feel like a bit of a betrayal, but instead of moping about it, let's just try to take some steps towards addressing the root issues. Now, it's unrealistic to do this for everyone, but for the people who are really, truly important to you, that's a different story. Focus on these few first, and then you can add people as your schedule permits. So let's jump into the three strategies for maintaining friendships. One, reach out to check in. This could be over WhatsApp, text, message, or email. The most personal touch would be through a phone call, but we tend to focus on written communication a little bit more these days. So the next best thing would be to email and text. My tip would be to avoid doing this outreach over social media because it just feels a little bit less personal, at least for me. That's probably because with social media, it's effortless. But with an email or a text message, you really are making a deliberate effort to reach out in a more intimate way. I recently celebrated a birthday and it was so wonderful to get calls and personal messages, especially on that day. It really made me feel extra special. So the main point here is to be the person to reach out. Don't wait for your friend to do this. You do it. A simple, I miss you, let's hang out soon. Or if you haven't spoken to this person in a while, invite them to hop on the phone for a quick chat. It's not weird because there's precedent. This is a good friend of yours, after all, even though you may have lost touch. And if this friend lives in the same city, then invite them to coffee to catch up. You'd be surprised how a little check-in can go a long way. Okay, now that brings me to my next tip. Number two, meet in person. Prioritize face-to-face -face communication. There's no question that the best type of communication and one which is the most exquisitely complex is face-to-face, -face. yes. In-person communication does wonders for the soul. Think back to a time when you met a friend for coffee or lunch. How amazing did you feel? Energized, motivated, high on life? Now, I want you to compare that to a phone call with this friend or an exchange of written correspondence. Different, right? Absolutely. Now, I get that because life happens, you might not have the luxury of seeing this friend face to face. This is where technology can help us out a little bit. Doing video chats, Skype calls, FaceTiming, that sort of thing can definitely feel more like face-to-face -face than written modes of communication, both synchronous and asynchronous messaging, for example. But it shouldn't replace 
face-to-face communication. So when possible, definitely prioritize face-to-face over all other modes of communication. You're in your hometown for the weekend? Tell your bestie and plan an outing. Spending time in a major city for the holidays? Look up your friends who've settled there. Maybe you're doing some travel. Figure out if you have any close friends in that destination and catch up over lunch or dinner. Face-to-face is definitely more time-consuming and effortful, but it's definitely worth it. And there are ways to do it that can be woven seamlessly into your busy schedule. And lastly, number three, share something personal. So when you do check in with this person, whether digitally or in person, which is my favorite, make sure to have a meaningful and authentic conversation. If you're just going to run through the humdrum, how are you? Fine. And you? And walk through the motions, then defeats the purpose. If you're going to have an ego complex or maybe start comparing your life to their life, abort right away. This is not the path you want to go down. Remember, comparison is the thief of joy. That's what Theodore Roosevelt said. And in our age of social media and social comparison, it's such a good mantra to have. Better to focus on the present moment and relish in the opportunity you get to spend time together. Be present, be mindful, be excited, be grateful. Perhaps most important is to be authentic. That could mean sharing something personal as in only someone with close friend status gets the privilege of knowing, but this could also mean being vulnerable or acting goofy. Authenticity brings people closer together. And sharing something personal or showing vulnerability are about revealing your true essence. It's a way we express our authenticity. So you know the saying, with good friends, you just pick up right where you left off? It is so true. I can't tell you how many times I've felt that way with my close friends. It feels as though we've never even parted ways. And more surprisingly, I've even experienced something similar with people whom I didn't even know that well yet, but definitely had a strong connection to. You know, you just feel it. Like the people you feel could become close friends just from the first few minutes of meeting them. The bottom line here is that you both have chosen to set aside precious time for this engagement, so you got to make it count. So the next time you miss your BFF because you're far from home or just haven't had the time to devote to your kindred spirits, do these three things. Reach out to check in, forget your pride, and be the first person to do it. Two, prioritize face-to-face communication whenever possible. Yes, it takes more time, but that's kind of the point. And three, be authentic and present. It's a special moment, so definitely treat it that way. What's really cool about this is that you can do it with a close friend who you might not have seen in a while, but you can also do it with friends you just saw last weekend. Start making it a habit to treat your friends like the diamonds they are, shiny, sparkly, and super strong. Here's the thing. We need to invest in the people we care about by putting time into nurturing these relationships. Your tribe is so instrumental in your happiness and well-being. More and more research is showing us that having a community is one of the best things we can do for our mental health. It sounds nuts, but the science shows that loneliness and lack of friendships can be more harmful than sugar and tobacco. So maintain your friendships and strike up new ones because that hashtag no new friends is kind of lame. Sorry, Drake. Seriously, though, let's avoid the scarcity mindset and open up our hearts and minds to having an abundance mindset. Add new friends to your tribe and nurture the ones you already have. Remember that children's song we used to sing growing up? Make new friends, but keep the old. Those are silver and these are gold. I know that's going to be stuck in your head now. Whoops. <laughs> anyway, there's truth to that. All right, Xperners, that's a wrap on this lesson. Add these strategies to your Exploring Communications Toolkit, try them out, and make them your own. And be sure to check out the blog article over at myexperning.com to review the strategies and concepts discussed in this lesson today. If you love this lesson, which I hope you did, like, comment, and share. It really helps support the Exploring community and all the hard work that we put into this channel. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to join our tribe of Explorers. I will see you in the next episode.
Exploring Communication lesson. Happy exploring!